Hello students, welcome back again to Science Capsule of Perfect Self Learning Tool. So far we have completed episode 1, episode 2 and episode 3 of the chapter Metals and Non-Metals. So very important episodes, if you have not watched those episodes, you will find it, find the link in the i button and I will also provide in that description. In today's episode, we are going to learn how metals are extracted and various important topics. So this episode is going to be very very important so watch till the end of this video and if not subscribe this channel subscribe this channel right now and press bell icon for notification so let us get into today's episode dear students as we know the importance of metals in our day-to-day -day life we use various types of metals but we don't know how those metals are obtained. It's very very important for us to understand the various processes that are involved in extracting metals from their ore. So about the metals and their extraction, there are number of steps involved. Let us understand all these steps in detail. So let us understand the occurrence of metals. As far as the source of metals is concerned, there are two important source sources. One is sea and the second one is earth's crust. In sea, sodium, magnesium and other metals exist as chlorides. So as we are familiar with the fact that the sea contains large number of compounds. And earth's crust is one of the major source where different elements compounds are available dear students the elements or the compounds that exist naturally on the earth's crust is what we call minerals the percentage of the elements or compounds in minerals are relatively less so extraction of metals or non-metals or a particular element cannot be done on the minerals in some places you will find that the elements are available in plenty so we can extract the metals profitably we call it as ore so ore is a mineral in which the element can be extracted in a profitable percentage so here we can say that all the ores can be considered to be minerals but all the minerals cannot be ore So let us understand extraction of metals. In the previous episode we have seen about reactivity of metals in activity series. So in activity series the elements are arranged in a decreasing order of reactivity. So with the idea of activity series we can easily understand how a metal is extracted from its O. So basic idea about activity series is very very important. So let us recall once again activity series. Let me show you the activity series again. Look at the activity series where you will find various elements so here the elements can be classified into three groups first group will be from potassium to aluminium which lie top in the activity series so the elements present on the top in the activity series second one is the elements the metals present middle in the activity series so here we can write it as middle and the elements or the metals which lie low in the activity series so based on the classification of elements in the activity series different extraction methods we use to adopt the students there are some metals which are available on the earth's crust in free state and there are elements or metals which are available in combined state the elements which are bottom in the activity series are available freely in nature for example gold silver mercury copper so these elements are mostly available in free state however the elements such as copper and mercury is also available in combined state in the form of oxides and sulfides the elements which lie middle in the activity series those elements are zinc iron lead these elements are mostly available in the form of oxides sulfides and carbonates and the elements which are top in the activity series for example potassium sodium calcium magnesium aluminium these are a highly reactive metal so these metals never exist free in nature so these elements are always available in combined state here one more important point to note is that 
mostly the metals are available in the form of oxide ore this is because oxygen is highly reactive and abundant on the earth so oxygen combines with almost all the metals which we have already discussed in the chemical properties right so based on the reactivity we have grouped elements in three one is low in the activity series second one is middle in the activities third one is top in the activity series let us understand how elements in different groups are extracted by using various metallurgical process so let us understand the extraction of metals firstly we should know what is metallurgy metallurgy is the processes involved in the extraction of metals in order to extract a metal from its ore there are three basic steps involved all those steps collectively call it as metallurgy so the first step is concentration of ore it is also called as enrichment of ore the second step is reduction of a metal the third step is refining so these are the basic steps involved in the metallurgy so let us discuss one by one in detail in the first step that is concentration of ore the impurities such as sand soil these particles need to be removed from the ore so that the ore gets concentrated the ore is enriched or concentrated by various ways the larger impurities can be removed by hand picking method magnetic separation is another method sulfide ores can be concentrated with the help of froth flotation process no need to study about all these methods because these are not there in your syllabus just to understand that concentration of ore is just to remove sand soil and other impurities and these impurities are called gang particles g a n g u e gang particles so the the aim of concentration of ore is to just remove the gang particles and these gang particles are removed by using various steps they are hand picking magnetic separation froth filtration different separation techniques for concentration of ore is employed depending upon the type of ore moving on to the next step that is reduction of metal this is very very important let us understand how metal is reduced So dear students reduction is one of the most important step in the metallurgical process let us understand how the enriched ore can be reduced to its corresponding metal here in the activity series we get a different group of elements depending upon the type of elements we use different reduction process let us first understand how the elements which lie low in the activity series are reduced we know that mostly the elements are available free state so for those elements it's not necessary to undergo reduction process but we know that copper and mercury are some of the elements which can exist in the form of sulfide ores if they exist in the form of sulfide ore then they need to be reduced so in order to reduce a simple step is being involved we call it as a simple heating or heating alone these metal ores can be reduced for example mercury exists in the form of mercury sulfide we call this ore as a cinnabar so the sulfide ore of mercury is cinnabar so upon heating with the help of oxygen we will get mercury oxide and sulfur dioxide is formed then the mercury oxide is further heated then we get corresponding metal and oxygen so in all these cases we just heat the ore copper also exists in the form of sulfide ore then when it is heated in presence of oxygen we used to get cu2o that is copper oxide plus sulfur dioxide on further heating copper oxide we get so here heat we have to write here we will get cu plus oxygen in both the cases we can see very well that simple heating or by heating alone the metal ore can be reduced to corresponding metal so the elements which are low in the activity series are basically less reactive or least reactive so by with the help of simple heating those metal ores can be reduced to corresponding metals but to in order to reduce the elements which lie middle in the activity series 
heating alone we cannot use we have to use some other methods let us understand that also if we see the elements that lie middle in the activity series they are zinc iron fe lead these are the elements which lie middle in the activity series and we have already seen that these elements exist in the form of oxide ore carbonate ore and sulfide ore if it exists in the form of oxide ore then it is very easy to reduce with the help of suitable reducing agent like carbon we can reduce it but if they exist in the form of carbonate and sulfide ore then these ores need to be converted back into oxide ore so that we can reduce to metal by using reducing agent so the idea is we have to convert the carbonate or sulfide ore into oxide in order to do that various methods are being involved let us understand that in detail so we should know that zinc can exist in two different forms that is zinc in the form of zinc sulfide zinc can also exist in the form of zinc carbonate so in both the cases we have to convert them into oxide ore so that with the help of suitable reducing agent we can reduce them to corresponding metal so it is done in a different ways in order to convert sulfide ore into oxide ore a different step is used we call that as roasting so what is roasting in roasting generally the sulfide ore is heated in excess supply of oxygen as a result of this we will get a zinc oxide plus sulfur dioxide got it in order to convert carbonate ore into oxide ore another step is used we call it as calcination right so in calcination the ore carbonate ore is heated in absence of air in roasting sulfide ore is heated in presence of oxygen whereas in calcination carbonate ore is heated in absence of oxygen in that case we will get zinc oxide plus carbon dioxide so we can see very well that in both the cases whether it is a roasting or calcination we obtained oxide we have converted sulfide ore into oxide ore here carbonate ore is converted into oxide ore once they are converted into oxide ore then it's very very easy to convert them to corresponding metal by using suitable reducing agent let us see that also here zinc oxide with the help of suitable reducing agent such as carbon this can be reduced to corresponding zinc metal plus carbon monoxide here the role of carbon is it acts as a reducing agent so here the role of carbon is it acts as a reducing agent how it reduces zinc oxide is reduced to zinc apart from using carbon we can also make use of most reactive metal in the activity series to carry out a displacement reaction let us see that also with the help of displacement reaction also we can reduce them to corresponding metal see here zinc oxide when it reacts with uh, aluminium aluminium is more reactive than zinc then what happens being more reactive it goes into here and the zinc metal is removed then we get here is zinc plus al2o3 and such type of displacement reaction is highly exothermic so the heat produced is very large that it the product is obtained in the molten state one of the application of this reaction we can understand as a thermit reaction here we should understand what is a thermit reaction this thermit reaction is used to join the cracked railway tracks let us understand the thermit reaction in detail in thermit reaction what happens iron oxide fe2o3 when it reacts with aluminium in the here a kind of displacement reaction we can see here aluminium is in solid state iron oxide is also in solid state here in this chemical reaction what happens aluminium goes here being more reactive it replaces iron so iron will be displaced from here on the product side if you see al2o3 which is solid in nature and the reaction is highly exothermic the large amount of heat is produced which in which iron is obtained in molten state so here liquid state 
so we call it as molten that is liquid state in the above equation also this this is also exothermic reaction here aluminium oxide as a solid and zinc is obtained in liquid state here you can see very well that iron is obtained in a liquid state so this liquid iron can be used to join the railway track got it so this is the reason why this thermit reaction is very much useful in joining railway track so in order to reduce the concentrated ores to corresponding metals which lie middle in the activity series generally we use the roasting and the calcination process if they exist if the ore exists in carbonate or sulfide ore once they are converted into oxide ore then it is with the help of suitable reducing agents such as carbon that can be reduced into corresponding metal and apart from using carbon we can also use displacement reaction which we have seen just before let us understand the reduction of metals which lie top in the activity series so the elements that lie top in the activity series are potassium is there sodium calcium magnesium aluminium these are the elements and mostly these elements exist in the form of oxide ore if it is a potassium then it is available in the form of k2o and na2o magnesium oxide aluminium oxide al2o3 so this way we can expect these metals which lie top in the activity series that exist in the form of oxide in order to remove these metals we cannot use the earlier method what we have used for the metals of a middle in the activity series that is reduction with the help of carbon this is because in the earlier case we have seen that zinc oxide when react with the carbon we used to get a zinc plus carbon monoxide so here we with the help of carbon as a reducing agent we have reduced the oxide ore but the same cannot be used to reduce the potassium or the elements which lie top in the activity series like this here carbon cannot be used to reduce these metals because these metals that is the metals which lie top in the activity series have more affinity for oxygen than carbon so carbon cannot be used as a reducing agent and we cannot reduce with the help of a displacement reaction because these metals are already lie top in the activity series no other metals are more reactive than these metals so we can neither use carbon as a reducing agent to reduce these metals nor we can use displacement reaction so here the method by which these metals can be reduced is we call it as electrolytic reduction electro lytic reduction process so simple heating roasting calcination we cannot do we can use only electrolytic reduction let us understand this electrolytic reduction dear students for example sodium is there magnesium calcium these elements are available in the form of chlorides when the molten chlorides are electrolyzed or electricity is passed through a solution then these metals are reduced about the electrolysis we will see in the next section for now you just understand the chemical reaction how the extraction process is going on so here two electrodes or two chemical reactions take place one is at cathode and another one is at anode so cathode is a negatively charged electrode anode is a positively charged electrode when the molten salts of sodium magnesium calcium are electrolyzed then at the cathode the chemical reaction for example sodium exist in the form of sodium chloride we can write it as a sodium chloride when electricity is passed through the molten sodium chloride then the reaction which takes place at the cathode will be written as na plus one electron we will get sodium right here each chlorine ion loses one electron so altogether two chlorine ions here we will get chloride ion plus two electrons so this is the chemical reaction taking place at the cathode and anode so this is how the enriched ore of metals which lie top in the activity series can be reduced so let us understand the refining of metals dear students from the various reduction processes what we have seen before 
metals are metal ores are reduced to metals but they may contain some impurities those impurities need to be refined in order to get the ultra pure metal the refining of a metal is very very important various methods are employed the most widely used method for refining impure metal is electrolytic refining so understanding electrolytic refining is very very important by electrolytic refining number of metals are refined metals such as copper nickel gold are the examples of the metals refined under electrolytic refining let me show the experimental setup of electrolytic refining then the process also you will see now so this is the experimental setup of electrolytic refining on this setup you can see two metal plates and both the metal plates are connected to a battery the metal plate which is connected to the negative terminal it is called a cathode and the one which is connected to positive terminal is called anode here the metal to be refined is made as anode so we can say that the anode is a metal plate made of impure so the impure metal is taken as anode and here a pure metal is taken as a cathode suppose for example here copper is the metal to be refined the impure copper metal which is to be refined is connected to the positive terminal of the battery we call it as anode and a piece of pure copper metal is taken as a cathode so we can say that cathode is the pure metal and both cathode and anode is connected to a battery here the cathode and anode are put in a solution in a conducting solution called electrolyte here the electrolyte is the salt solution of the corresponding metal here in this case copper is the metal to be refined a solution of a copper metal salt is to be taken as electrolyte so here in this case copper salt copper sulfate is taken as electrolyte in order to increase the conductivity acid is added so we can take acidified copper sulfate as an electrolyte on passing electricity the electrolytic refining will start let us understand this process in detail when the battery is put on or on passing electricity anode a type of chemical reaction will take place and at cathode a type of chemical reaction will take place let us understand this chemical reaction if we understand this chemical reaction then it is very easy to understand the refining process here in the anode what happens the electrons are electron starts flow from anode so here at anode what happens copper ion loses electron so here by losing two electrons we get copper ion two electrons so you can see here two electrons start moving from this direction and finally it reaches here so the anodic reaction goes like this so by losing two electrons each copper atom forms copper ion and goes into the electrolyte and at the cathode you see here at the cathode we can see here electrons are received at the cathode end so here two electrons are received by each copper ion and here copper atom is attached over the surface of the cathode so here the copper ions which entered into the electrolyte finally goes and gets attached on the surface of cathode by accepting two electrons so the amount of copper ions go into the electrolyte is absorbed on the surface of cathode in this way all the copper metal loses electrons and they form copper ions and go into electrolyte and equal amount of copper ions get attached on the other side that is on cathode that is pure metal during this process what happens the impurities get collected at the bottom of the anode and this impurity is called anode mud called anode mud so this is how pure metal is obtained by electrolytic refining corrosion is a process in which metal is slowly eaten away by the action of air water acid etc so the process is called corrosion 
Let us understand with some example. Silver articles undergo corrosion as a result of this a black deposit you can see on the surface of the silver articles due to the formation of a silver sulfide. Right? This is one of the example. Secondly, the copper articles undergo corrosion when they react with the moist carbon dioxide. Slowly, the copper articles lose the shiny brown appearance and a green coating you could see due to the formation of a copper carbonate here. Copper carbonate. Thirdly, the iron objects undergo corrosion and as a result of this, a brown flaky substance is formed. So the shiny appearance of the iron gates and all you are much familiar recedes away due to the formation of a brown substance. We call it as a rust, right? So when iron undergoes corrosion, we call it as a rusting process. And this is due to the formation of iron oxide. We call it as iron oxide. Also, we call it as rust. So these are some of the familiar metal objects which undergo corrosion. And as a result of this, we get different colors on corrosion and due to the formation of different substances. So this is very, very important as far as examination is concerned. So dear students, let us understand the prevention of corrosion. As far as the prevention is concerned, there are various ways by which corrosion can be prevented in that the iron materials can be prevented by painting. So painting the surface of the iron object is one of the familiar way. Oiling the iron spare parts, greasing, chrome plating and many more methods are employed in order to prevent iron objects from corrosion or rusting. Galvanization, this is one of the most important method. Here what happens, a thin coat of zinc is applied over the surface of the metals to be prevented from corrosion. So, the iron objects are mostly galvanized to improve its quality and also to last long. You may be familiar with the GI pipes and all. So GI materials are available which has got improved qualities. Thirdly, the metals can be prevented by increasing its property. We call it as alloying. So dear students, you should know what is an alloy. Alloy is a homogeneous mixture of two or more than two metals or a metal and a non-metal. Here by alloying we can improve the quality of the metals and non-metals. Let us see some of the improved quality of alloys. Firstly steel. Normally the iron in pure form can't be used because it's very very soft. In order to make it hard some part of here we can say 0.05% of carbon is added with iron then in that case we call it as a steel which is very very hard and secondly the stainless steel we are very much familiar with the stainless steel which we use in our day-to-day -day activities it is an alloy of a mixture of iron nickel and chromium and these metals are combined we get stainless steel which is very very hard and also it has anti rust property thirdly brass is another alloy which is a mixture of copper and zinc next bronze is an alloy of copper and tin Solder is the material which is used to join electrical wires or electrical components and also the solder is an alloy of a mixture of lead and tin. So these are various ways by which metals can be prevented from corrosion. So dear students, I believe you understood episode 4. If so, hit the like button and share as much as possible to your friends and if not subscribe this channel, subscribe this channel right now and press bell icon for notification. See you all on another day with a new topic, new lesson. Till then, take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.